Welcome to Dollars and Cents with Friedman Financial. This morning during the program, your host, Mark Friedman, may discuss specific financial planning and investment ideas. These discussions are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations. Financial planning and investment advice is offered through Friedman Financial, an SEC-registered investment advisor located in Peabody, Massachusetts. Securities are offered through LPL Financial, a member of FINRA and SIPC. Friedman Financial is a separate entity from LPL Financial. Investing involves risk, including loss of principal. Always consult a certified financial planner professional, qualified attorney, or tax advisor prior to investing to determine what is appropriate for you. Listeners to this radio show should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the investment company carefully before investing. The prospectus contains this and other information about the mutual fund, variable annuity, and variable annuity subaccounts. To obtain a prospectus, you may contact Friedman Financial or your financial advisor. Prospectuses should be read carefully before making a potential investment. And now, here's the host of Dollars and Cents, Mark Friedman of Friedman Financial. Good morning and welcome to Dollars and Cents with Friedman Financial on North Shore 1049. Hope everybody is doing well. Man, could we use some rain, huh? Oh my God. It seems like uh, it seems like all it does is rain. July has not been the, the favorite month, I think, of many people. I mean, my wife and I were talking about this yesterday. Imagine if this was last year. Imagine if July, in the middle of COVID, for those of us that had all of those pools that we thought, oh, at least it's COVID, we have a pool out backyard to hang out, a nice backyard to sit out and really get out of the house. Imagine if last year was like this. Well, let's hope that the weeks that follow get better and they make us forget about the three miserable rainy weeks in July that we have had. Um, I feel bad for the kids that have gone off to summer camp. You know, summer camps reopen this year. Um, some kids have been at camp for three weeks already, and I think they've had one sunny day. Um, I would bet when the kids come home, you know, from their fourth week of overnight camp, and they bring home all of their clothes and their sheets and all of their stuff, you're probably just better off keeping it in a trash bag and throwing it away. Because I, I would imagine that everything is just full with mud and mustiness and mildew. and ugh, ugh, ugh. Anyhow, uh, my name is Mark Friedman. I'm president and, and CEO. And you, and you paint a pretty picture this morning, Mark. Thank you. <laughs> well, thanks, thanks for waking up bright and early with me, Biff. And uh, that, that's Biff, our producer. Yeah, I, I hope everybody's enjoying their Sunday morning with your nice, comfortable cup of coffee. And so your, it's gotta, it's gotta go up from here, Mark. It, it, it is. The, it is going up. Everything is getting better, and I am, I'm generally a an very positive person. I really, really. I that little rant, and I was like, "Wow, uh, the weather, weather's really gotten." Uh, I, oh, Mark, man, oh, two man. E's and a D has really had it. That's enough with the rain already. My goodness, I'm just. I don't know. All right, all right. I'm back. I'm back. My name is Mark Friedman, I'm president and CEO of Friedman <laughs> Financial, located in Peabody, Massachusetts, right across the street from the North Shore Mall, and just above. Daniela's Restaurante. Almost called it Alto Forno, but it is Daniela's Restaurante. Um, same owners, just a new name change, and uh, the food is fabulous there. Anyways, I'm here in studio. It is uh, We are live in studio on this December... Uh, no, I'm sorry, December. Gosh. Uh, July. You are rattled. You are <laughs> am, so rattled. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it's, it's not December. On um, This July 18th is where we are. And um, hey, from here, I, I got a busy day today. I am um, heading out from this job, and I'm heading over to Gaetano's restaurant. Hey, it's raining out. If you want to do something for brunch, um, my son Noah and I are performing today at Gaetano's. We performed last Sunday, and they said, wow, you guys did all right. It was our first time ever performing together, and they said, you want to do the next five Sundays? And so we figured, well, we've got no life. So, sure, uh, we'll do the next five Sundays um, <laughs> right after this show. Um, I'm heading over, picking up Noah at the house, and then we're heading over to Gaetano's from 11 to 1 for brunch, and he and I will be performing live. So if you'd like to come out, and uh, the food is fabulous there, by the way. Um, they, you know what? one of my favorite things that they put out there? If you order a fruit bowl, it is like a major bowl, a bowl of fruit that you could share with a lot of folks. Uh, but the omelets are great. The uh, Eggs Benedict, really, really good. They make their own homemade muffins. So please, absolutely, head over to Gaetano's and Stoneham today. From 11 to 1, we are there. Um, you're going to want a reservation, though, because last week when we were there, they almost sold out. So um, I suspect it will be busy there today. Anyways, we are here with financial advice in a language you can understand. My name is Mark Friedman. 
like I said, president and CEO of Friedman Financial. We have been providing financial planning and investment management advice to individuals and families who live on the North Shore, the Merrimack Valley, and the Southern New Hampshire area since 1968. Yeah, well, not me. Uh, I was two. My father started the firm back then. I joined the firm in 1991, so I am celebrating my 30th year with the firm. Dad retired in 2007, and Marion Gilman, my business partner, joined us in the year 2000. And Marion and I have been running the firm ever. Well, she became a partner, I think it was in 2010, but we've been running the firm ever since. We had a big announcement this past week at Friedman Financial. Christian Karcher, who is the third financial planner in our office, he's been with us about four years. We uh, promoted him to Director of Financial Planning. Uh, Christian was all excited about that. He's 26 years old. He's, he's just done a tremendous and fabulous job in the four years that he has been with us, and it's a well-deserved promotion for him. Um, he is going to continue to elevate the role that he plays in our office, and we are very, very excited um, to include him as part of our leadership team uh, at Friedman Financial. So things are going great there. I hope things are going well for you. One of the things that we have seen as of late, and I mean, lots of calls from people about this, is people call, they say, hey, you know, over the past year and a half with this pandemic, I, I didn't spend much money. In fact, I saved a lot of money. I got a lot of money sitting in the bank. And the bank, as we all know, pays next to nothing. But you know what the bank does do? It guarantees your money. So just because it doesn't pay much in the way of interest isn't a bad thing sometimes. Having a guaranteed, a resource to be able to turn to when you need to come up with five or $10,000 for something or $2,000 or $1,400, whatever it is, it's nice to know that there is money in the bank. But the problem is so many people have seen over the past, oh, I don't know, a year or so, they've seen the performance of their accounts just go through the roof. I mean, there are people that'll see up 20%, up 30%. That, folks, that's not normal. That That's it's unrealistic to think that that's going to happen again. And in fact, it's more realistic to think that we will revert back to the mean, which means that perhaps over time, a well-balanced portfolio might give us 6 to 8% a year. And you know what that means? When you get 32% in one year, in order to get back to an average of 8% or 6%, you got to have some negative years. And I think we have forgotten we have forgotten about the fact that the stock market can lose money. Not just for the day, but it can lose money over time. And we have to be rational when we make our investment decisions. And that goes back to this bank account thing. So we're getting lots of questions from folks that are saying, Mark, I got all this money in the bank. Can I give it to you? And you can invest it and do better than what's at the bank. Well, what is do better than what's at the bank? Anything? Really? I mean, think about this. If you have $10,000 in the bank and your account at the bank will earn 1%, good luck if you can even get 1%, but let's say you have $10,000 and it's going to earn 1%. Do you know how much 1% of interest on $10,000 is? Go ahead, grab your calculator if you'd like. 1% on $10,000 is $100. $100. So let's say you could find someone that would give you 3% on your money and you could find 3%. Okay, you've gone from 100 to $300. Now, would it be guaranteed? What if they said, well, I can get you 3%, but it's not quite guaranteed. You could lose money. Well, how much could you lose? Well, what if you could lose all of it? Would you still be willing, or even all of the interest? Would you still be willing to take the bet? I don't, I don't know that that makes the most sense on a short-term basis. Hey, if you're willing to say, I'm not going to touch the money for three, five, ten years, of course you do that. But if you need the money perhaps in three months or six months or even a year, why would you take the risk to go from $100 in interest to $300 in interest when there's the possibility that you might not get the $300 in interest and every month when you open up your statement, it could be worth less than what you thought it was going to be. I don't know that that's worth the aggravation. But get this. This is what drives me nuts. Is people will tell me, Mark, I'm able to get, I'm getting 0.3% interest. 0.3% interest on my account at the bank. But another bank that I heard is offering 0.5%. Should I move my money? 
0.3% on a $10,000 investment is $30. 0.5 is $50. I can think of a million places that I could drop $20 in a moment's notice. Remember, that $30 is earned over the course of 365 days. So the difference between $30 and $50, $20, divide $20 by 365 days, and that's how much money you're making every day. Is it worth it? It's not even worth starting the engine to your car to move the money from one bank to another. Folks, we're, we're nitpicking here. So folks will think, they'll say, all right, well, I've got this money in the bank now. If it's only earning 0.3 or 0.5, Mark, why don't I give it to you? You'll do better than for me. Yeah, perhaps I could introduce you to some investments that pay better, that have a higher rate of interest. But they all come with risks. They all come with risks. And some will say, well, Mark, I've heard about this guy that will pay me a guaranteed rate of interest on my money and it'll guarantee it for three years. Oh, that's good. That's good, maybe. And then I'll ask them, well, what is the cost if you want to get the money out? Oh, I didn't ask that question. Well, generally, those are uh, those can be surprises to you. Not uh, There's a reason when something sounds too good to be true, there's probably a catch in there some way, uh, somewhere. But you need to also understand that sometimes knowing what the catch is, is a catch that you're willing to live with. But are you? Do you know what they all are? Look, salesmen are prone to telling you all of the great bells and whistles that are get attached to any product. Whether it's a money product, whether it's a car, whether it's a refrigerator or a drone you might buy over at Best Buy. They're going to tell you all the great things about it. But do they tell you about the challenges that are attached? What are the drawbacks? And you know what we do to find out about the drawbacks? We go to the internet and we go to Professor Google or we go to some website that is rating one of these products or these ideas and we rely on the comments. On the comments. Has it ever occurred to you that sometimes when you read comments on the internet that they're actually not from real people having real experiences? Perhaps these are folks that work for the company that have come up with 90 different profiles and they all write about great things about the product. In fact, they're paid to do that. Or there's collections of people that are out to destroy a company. There are competitors who will ask their employees to come up with 90 different profiles and write nasty things about their competitor's product. Can you really trust Professor Google and all of the other types of search engines that are out there to get you your answer, I find it's usually best to talk to people in person who have used it. I love it when my daughters will tell me, hey, I was talking to my friend and we were going over this issue and talking about this and talking about that. And I said, when did you talk to them? I, I thought they were, um, I, I didn't know you, you were running into them. Well, you know, we talk every day. I said, you do? Well, we talk, you know, through text messaging. And I'm sorry, I, I, I don't look at text messaging as authentic communication. I think text messaging becomes a, you know, a, a quick response, but you can't feel the emotions. You can't see the body language. You can't hit, you know, catch the tonality of someone's voice. Think about all the different ways that you can say, hi, how are you? I mean, think about that. You can go, hi, how are you? Or hi, how are you? There's a lot of different ways to say that. But on a text, you don't know the tonality that's coming from that message. I believe that the best way to deal with, especially when it comes to money, is to look is to have that relationship in person. Not through an email, not through a fintech connection piece, not through text messaging, and not um, just just connecting with people. I think face-to-face -face works best. I don't even like this whole telehealth thing. I know it's convenient for all of us to be able to talk to a doctor through telehealth. But even the doctors are saying, um, it's just not the best. I mean, for a, for a cut or a bruise or a something. But if you're talking to a psychologist through telehealth, 
and you're sitting there having a glass of wine and smoking a cigarette while you're talking to your psychologist or the, uh, you know, the, the bell from your oven is going off or the phone is ringing. I mean, you really can't have a great conversation. And when it comes to money, when it comes to financial planning, talking about the most intimate details about money and how you live around those dollars is critically important. And that has to happen in person. And it does in an office like ours at Friedman Financial. We're, we're certainly accepting new clients. We have 480 something households these days, but we have the capacity to add more clients. And if now's the time for you to get serious about your financial planning, I hope you'll pick up the phone. Give us a call at 978 531 8108. That's 978 531 8108. Or if you'd like, sign up for a newsletter. It comes out each and every Friday at 10 30 in the morning. All you need to do is go to my website, freedmanfinancial.com. That's Friedman to ease in a D, financial.com. Go to the bottom of any page on our website, put in your name and your email address, and immediately you're signed up this Sunday. I mean, next Friday, you'll get it at 1030 in the morning in your inbox. And in the meantime, if you do have a question, something I said here on the radio, burning question, whatever it is, there's a comment section there. Just drop in the question, and I promise you within the next 24 hours, you will get a response from me. I'm very, 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 very good at re- just that was an extra very in there, Biff. I saw Biff's eyes light up for that. <laughs> that was an additional <laughs> very. Thank, thank, thank you, thank you. Next extra very. We'll uh, we'll make sure that that happens, and uh, we're going to take a quick break. And when we get back, I've got more financial advice in a language you can understand. You're listening to Dollars and Cents with Friedman Financial on North Shore 104.9. prepare for retirement we know that your financial hopes and dreams are important to you but how can you focus on the future when you're so busy juggling the day to day you need a plan a plan you can define a plan you can track and a plan you can modify as things change at Friedman Financial that's what we do we know that planning for your retirement can be overwhelming but with more than 50 years of experience we know what you're going through we're experienced and we're fiduciaries we listen we collaborate and we deliver a plan that helps you sleep at night. You don't have to do this alone anymore. Turn to us to ask why and how and what if. If now's the time to get serious about your retirement, give us a call. We're Friedman Financial of Peabody. Financial advice in a language you can understand. Visit FriedmanFinancial.com. That's Friedman to ease in a D financial. Friedman Financial is a registered investment advisor. Securities offered through LPL Financial. Member FINRA, SIPC. The following message is brought to you by Friedman Financial of Peabody through 1049's Project Local Program. Hi, it's Daniela from North Shore Hospitality Group. Daniela's Cafe Danvers, Polano Steakhouse, and the new Daniela's Ristorante in Peabody. Reminding you to support your local restaurants. Stop by the cafe for pasta and pastries. Enjoy a cocktail on our heated veranda at Daniela's Ristorante. Or indulge in prime steaks and seafood at Polano Steakhouse. Dine in, take out, or purchase gift cards from all of our locations. Daniela's Cafe Danvers, Polano Steakhouse, and the new Daniela's Ristorante Peabody. Welcome back to Dollars and Cents with Friedman Financial on North Shore 104.9. My name is Mark Friedman. I'm president and CEO of Friedman Financial located in Peabody, Massachusetts. Located right across the street from the North Shore Mall and just above Daniela's Ristorante. Hope you're all having a nice day. It is wet again. I'm not going to... I went on a little rant about the about the weather in the last segment. I mean, it's something we can't control. Mother Nature does some pretty amazing things. And it's um, as, as wet as it's been here in, you know, on the East Coast here in Massachusetts, it is hot and dry on the West Coast. Um, you know, we do what we got to do. We got to do what we got to do. But things are coming back. I mean, I, I feel bad for a lot of these restaurants, um, certainly those in Salem and Newburyport um, and others, Gloucester, those are, that are out on the water that, you know, they had to really shut everything down last year. And they figured this year, 
That's what it's all about. We're going to get out there. People are going to have outdoor activities. We're going to sit out in the patio. It's going to be great. And man, all these patios are, you know, just staying wet. And But fortunately, fortunately, I think the restaurants have come up with some really nice uh, ability to adapt uh, by putting tents outside and allowing for more of the outdoor seating. I think they've seen their, you know, seating capacity, you know, increase, maybe even double in some cases because they can put seating outside. It has to be covered. But those patio decks and all those things, you, people are saying, oh, I want to sit out near the water. Well, you can sit out in the water if you want. I mean, because it is raining every day. It seems to be raining. Hopefully, we got a better week ahead. And, and I will tell you, I'm thinking August. August is going to kill it. And that's what I'm thinking. It's going to be great weather. And you're going to totally forget about how miserable July was. That's the optimist coming out in me, Biff. Was, you know, I, I know. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. We may yes. hold this against you yeah. about, about August 15th. And it might be a lynching mob out there. <laughs> if, this, if this continues. You may, you may be right. <laughs> but I'm going to try to remain optimistic that uh, the best is yet to come. I mean, look. I continue to say that no matter the circumstance. Look, even when we faced COVID and we had to readapt and rethink and re change, you know, how we delivered everything from the messaging we do here on the radio show to the way I ran my business, to the way you worked, to the way you dealt with your children, with their education, the way you ran your household, everything we had to adapt. And there are the pessimists that will say, this time is different. This time it's different. We're never going to get out of this. I never, ever believed that. And in fact, if you listen to some of the radio shows that I did, you know, last year, I remained the consummate optimist. Um, I honestly didn't think the stock market would come back as rapidly as it did. I mean, I was a big believer. I, I, I was a believer in what was called the square root return to the markets. And, you know, people talked about a V-shaped recovery and a U-shaped recovery. Remember, the U-shape was the market's going to go down. It's going to hang around down for a while. And then, boom, it'll shoot up. The V-shaped recovery was this thing. It's going to go down deep and then shoot right back up. I believe we were going to be in a square root. And you're thinking, what the hell is a square root, Mark? Square root meant it was going to go down deep. We'd shoot up halfway. And then we'd level off for a long time. And... What was wrong is I got the the right side of the square root wrong. Because what happened is we d went down deep. We shot up past where we started and continued going up past where we started and continued going up even further past where we started. And then we've now begun to level off. Now, I thought that was going to happen much sooner um, or, or actually a lot longer than what it did. But, you know, I'll take it. I think everyone's pretty happy with what's happened in their portfolio but one of the things that's interesting, this past month, you got your June statements. A lot of people, it's now, what, July, I don't know, 17th, 18th, something like that. You got your June statement, and you looked at it, and you go, man, my account didn't go anywhere. It's pretty much the same as what it was last month. What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. Nothing is wrong. In fact, I'd like it to go down. And I say this all the time. When the markets go up and go up on a regular basis, I'm rooting for down months. Now, honestly, I'd love those down months to happen in the middle of the month so you don't even see it on your statement. But because we have a high on the 1st and a low on the 30th of the month, you're going to feel that, you know, pretty significantly in your statement. But people tend to forget about what's happening in the 28 days in between the 1st and the 30th. What we have to do is we have to look beyond just one month or two months or three months or even one year. When we're talking about investing... It means to invest your money. Investing means putting it away for a long time. Investing long term. Because many people, when they look at investments, they say, oh, well, what's the history been on this for, in this investment? How's it done over three years or five years or 10 years or 15 years or 20 years? Yet they make the investment and three months in, they go, oh, this investment's down. This sucks. I got to get out. Well, why did you bother to look for three years and five years? What do you think? In three years and five years and 10 years, this, this account just went up? No, it didn't. It, it vacillates. It goes up and down. An emergency fund in the bank does not. And that, if there's anything else that I could leave with you today, it's the responsibility that you all have, we all have, to make sure that we have adequate money, easily accessible, 
in the bank, I don't care if it earns 0% interest, that you have money in the bank that could pay your bills for the next three to six months. And if you don't, that is where you need to put some money. Not putting more money into the stock market, not putting more money into your 401k, but having enough money in the bank that's easily acceptable and not subject to risk that covers your day-to-day monthly expenses for three to six months. Now, most people don't know what that monthly expense is. That's part of the problem. People will say, well, I don't know what I spend every month. Well, I said, well, it's easy to figure it out. They go, no, 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 I don't want to know. That's the truth. They don't want to know what it is. Well, if your intent is to get your financial house in order, if your intent is to be financially responsible, you should have a general suspicion of what it is that you spend every month. Now, I love it when people try to do it in their head. And they say, well, just give me a minute. I'll, I'll tell you how much I spend. And they think, well, this is my mortgage payment. This is about what I pay for the gas bill, for the electric bill, for the cable bill. I put about this much money in the car um, for gas in my car. I pay about this much money in groceries. So that must be the answer. Wrong. You spend money on far more things than just those five or six items that I just listed. In fact, I, I, I had this conversation with a guy uh, a few weeks ago. And I, I said to him, I said, what do you think? He made like $250,000 a year. His household. They made $250,000 a year. And I'm looking at his bank account because when we do financial planning, we ask you to send us everything from your bank accounts, your investment statements, your insurance policies, tax returns, etc. And I'm looking at his bank statements and he has $12,000 in the bank. And he makes $250,000 a year between he and his wife. And I said, what do you think you spend every month? And he says to me, I don't know. I don't know, six, seven thousand dollars a month is probably what I spend. Six or seven thousand dollars a month. And I said, How'd you come up with that? And he starts listing off, well, my mortgage is this, my electric bill, property tax. And he comes up, it's about seven thousand a month. I said, Well, I tend to think that that's not the case. Well, why would you think that? I said, Well, if you're making two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year between you and your wife, you have taxes taken out, even you participate in your four oh one K plan. You probably have $150,000 coming into the house, which is more like fourteen or $15,000 a month coming into the house after taxes. And I said, and you got $12,000 sitting in the bank. So if you think you're spending $7,500, what happened to the other $7,500 to $5,000 that's coming in every month? He says, I don't know. I said, well, my guess is that you're spending it. Well, what am I spending it on? I, I don't know what you're spending it on. You know, you, you may not know what you're spending it on. He says, he says, oh, he says, you know, I said, what's your average credit card statement every month? What does that look like every month? He says, I don't know, like four to $6,000 a month. I said, wait, 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 wait. You told me you spent $7,500 and you counted off the mortgage, the electric bill, the cable bill, all of that stuff. Or any of that, any of those things paid through your credit card? Well, well, yeah, the uh, the telephone bill is and the electric bill is. How about your mortgage? Well, no, 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 not that. I said if you're spending four to six thousand dollars in your credit card, and the bulk of what you're and and you've said, well, maybe my electric bill and maybe my cable bill is paid through my credit card. The rest of that stuff is being spent on other things. I don't know what they're being spent on. But chances are you're spending closer to $12,000. No, I'm not spending $12,000. There's no way I'm spending $12,000. Well, tell you what. Why don't you send me six months bank statements? Some of your last six months bank statements. And I'm not going to go and scrutinize every line because I really don't care what you spend on golf or liquor or whatever it is. I don't care about that. I just want to get a sense as to what's coming into the household and what's going out. Well, we did that analysis. And we learned that he was spending closer to fourteen to seventeen thousand dollars a month, not the seventy five hundred dollars. And the reason why it was seventy five seventeen thousand and not fourteen thousand or fifteen thousand, like I originally remembered, is because his parents give him two thousand dollars a month too, just to help him out. Yeah, in fact, that was one of the questions on North Shore 1049's Erica's question of the day: What is it that 
40, uh, 50, 60, and 70-year-olds continue to do at a rate of about $4,000 a year? And the answer was spend on their adult children. The average 50, 60, and 70-year-old is spending about $4,000 a year on each of their adult children, just giving them through gifts or supporting them in some way. This guy's getting close to $24,000. So before we start worrying about should I be investing in large cap investments or small cap? Should I be putting money in my 401k? Should I participate in all of these other financial instruments that are being presented to me? The first thing we need to do to be in effect, to build an effective financial plan is for you, the individual, to understand your own personal cash flow. How much money comes into the house Versus how much money goes out. This was such an eye-opening experience to this individual. To both he and his, and his spouse. It was kind of shocking. And they felt bad because now they understood. Why is it that they don't have any money put aside for their kid's education? Why is it that the only money that they have set aside is the money in their respective 401k plans? Because it's the only thing that they've been doing that has automatic savings to it. They're learning. And we're working with them and they can be very, very successful at what they're doing. Because one thing they don't have to worry about, frankly, is retirement. Because their 401ks are so large at their ages that even with the smallest amount of money being put in their 401ks, there's going to be so much money available there for them to support their lives along with retirement that they might just do fine. But what they need to do is they need to manage the part that's in the present. They're doing well planning for their future. But their, short, their present and their short-term future needs addressing. That's what financial planners will help you to do. And that's what we do at Friedman Financial. Something I'd love to help you with. Because you can be successful at it if you're serious about putting your financial house in order. we got to take a quick break. But when we get back, I want to tell you a little story about someone who confuses tax rates and taxes with income and assets. Now, you may have no idea what the heck I'm talking about when I just said that, but you're going to get it. And I'm going to share that with you when we get back. You're listening to Dollars and Cents with Friedman Financial on North Shore 1049. <laughs> As you prepare for retirement, we know that your financial hopes and dreams are important to you. But how can you focus on the future when you're so busy juggling the day to day? You need a plan, a plan you can define, a plan you can track, and a plan you can modify as things change. At Friedman Financial, that's what we do. We know that planning for your retirement can be overwhelming, but with more than 50 years of experience, we know what you're going through. We're experienced, and we're fiduciaries. We listen, we collaborate, and we deliver a plan that helps you sleep at night. You don't have to do this alone anymore. Turn to us to ask why, and how, and what if. If now's the time to get serious about your retirement, give us a call. We're Friedman Financial of Peabody. Financial advice in a language you can understand. Visit FriedmanFinancial.com. That's Friedman, two E's and a D, Financial.com. Friedman Financial is a registered investment advisor. Securities offered through LPL Financial. Member FINRA, SIPC. The following message is brought to you by Friedman Financial of Peabody through 1049's Project Local Program. Hi, it's Daniela from North Shore Hospitality Group. Daniela's Cafe Danvers, Polano Steakhouse, and the new Daniela's Ristorante in Peabody. Reminding you to support your local restaurants. Stop by the cafe for pasta and pastries. Enjoy a cocktail on our heated veranda at Daniela's Ristorante. Or indulge in prime steaks and seafood at Polano Steakhouse. Dine in, take out, or purchase gift cards from all of our locations. Daniela's Cafe Danvers, Polano Steakhouse, and the new Daniela's Ristorante Peabody. It's not about the money, money, money. We don't need your money, money, money. We just want to make the world. Welcome back to Dollars and Cents with Friedman Financial on North Shore 1049. It is Sunday, July 18th, and it is raining. Yep, still raining. It's been raining this entire month. 
hopefully you've gotten to get to, you've gotten to see some great new movies um perhaps you've you know exhausted everything on netflix and amazon prime and hulu and all of these other networks now i mean there's i, I think we've run out of movies to watch i think we've uh done them all um hopefully if, if you've got some recommendations by the way if you've got some recommendations of shows for me to watch that Solar and I can find something new to watch, uh, please send them send them our way. Uh, my email, mark, M-A-R-C, at freedmanfinancial.com. That's mark, M-A-R-C, at freedmanfinancial.com. Always looking for new things to watch. Um, we, we really need to expand our horizons because I feel like we've exhausted Netflix. But probably not. Probably not even close, actually. Anyway, today, like I said, today, July 18th, 2021, if you've got plans, if you want to um, look to, for something to do today from 11 to 1, maybe you're a little hungry, you want to go for brunch, well, I'd be happy to see you. I'm performing at Gaetano's in Stoneham this morning from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. with my son Noah. He and I, will. I'll be playing the piano, he'll be playing the guitar, we'll be singing together, entertaining people with all sorts of songs from yesterday and today, um, kind of like the music that they play right here on North Shore 104.9. Uh, we'll be we'll be doing some of that, so feel free to swing down. I would encourage you to make a reservation because they do fill up the place pretty quickly because the food, is frankly, people are going for the food, not for the entertainment. The food is really that good. So uh, swing down there, Gaetano's, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. today. Um, I'm there this Sunday, and we'll be there the next, I guess, four consecutive Sundays after today. So feel free to come by and see us. Anyway, when we last left, um, for, oh, I should first tell you, for those of you that are just joining us, my name is Mark Friedman. I'm president and CEO of Friedman Financial, located in Peabody, Massachusetts, right across the street from the North Shore Mall and just above Daniela's Ristorante. We provide financial planning and investment management advice to individuals and families who live all throughout the North Shore, the Merrimack Valley, and the southern New Hampshire area. We've been providing it since 1968. That is right, a long time. That's 53 years. I'm 55, and I did not start providing financial planning advice when I was two. That was my father who started the firm back then. Dad retired in 2007. I joined the firm in 1991. So this commemorates my 30th year of providing financial planning and investment management advice to individuals and families. My business partner, Marion Gilman, joined us in 2000 and became a partner in 2010. And just this past week, we promoted Christian Karcher, who's been with me for four years as a director of financial planning. So he is joining our leadership team as well. Uh, he does a fabulous job and uh, we'll be working with all of our clients. And just so you know, a lot of people ask, you know, Mark, I hear you on the radio and you mentioned Marion, you mentioned Christian, you mentioned some of the other folks in your office. If I were to come in to work with you, uh, come into the office, who would I work with? Do I get to work with you? Do I work with Marion? Do I work with Christian? And one of the biggest benefits and the things that people have liked so much about my office is that there is none of my clients or Marion's clients or Christian's clients. You're a client of the firm. And, you know, sure, if there's a favorite person you'd like to work with, whether it's Marion, whether it's me, whether it's Christian, doesn't matter. I mean, you can certainly spend, you know, more time with them than anybody else, but we're all in it on the decisions. We're all in it on the conversations and making sure that we understand your financial planning needs such that if I'm on vacation and you've got a question and you've been working with me, Marion is equally in tune as to what's going on in your life as am I. We share all that information. And how do we share that information? Um, no, it's not through gossip that we have at the office. But every time we have a meeting with you, we dictate what's called a memo to file. What that means is I'm telling a story of what happened in our conversation over the telephone, in person, um, whatever it is, so that everybody can capture the chronological history of what's gone on in your life. So that if you call and I'm out of the office, the person answering the phone can look at your record and take a quick look at the last two pieces of communication, for instance, that have been gone, gone on with our office so that they're bringing, being brought into the loop about what it is that you might want to be talking about. We find that very effective for our clients. And our clients love the fact that they're not reliant on one person, nor are they reliant on the person who answers the 800 phone number. We are a team in our office. And that team supports you. Your interests are placed first. And the way that we can place your interests first is by understanding where everything is and what everything is worth as it relates to your personal financial situation. But one of the things that we can't control is the way we interpret what we hear 
from our friends, from the media, from social media, from books we read, newspapers we read. And I had an interesting conversation this week. A person came in and they were a little worried. They said, Mark, I'm selling my home here on the North Shore. And it's a home that I inherited about five years ago. And I'm planning to put the house on the market for $700,000. I inherited the home that my parents purchased back in the 1970s for $29,900. But, inher- but, but I inherited it five years ago. And she says, and I'm worried. I'm worried about the tax liability. I'm worried about what I'm hearing from Joe Biden, our president, saying that we're going to tax, we're going to put a maximum and higher tax rate on those that have more, that, that are earning more than $440,000 a year. And I said, well, hold on a second. Why do you think that applies to you? And she says, well, I'm going to sell my house for $700,000 and my parents paid twenty nine nine for it. I said, well, but when you inherited the house, you inherited it at what the value of it was when mom died. Well, what was it worth when mom died? She says, I don't know. I said, well, I'm sure an appraisal was done, especially if the house was changed over to you. She says, oh, I'll have to take a look. She calls me back couple hours later. She says, yeah, she says, I inherited it $450,000. So there's still $250,000 in gain mark that I'm going to have to pay on taxes. I said, no, you won't. She says, well, why not? I said, has it been your primary residence? She said, yes. I said, have you put any money into the house since mom died? She says, yes. I said, well, then as a single individual, you're given the first $250,000 free in taxes of gains. I am, yes. And I said, and you will have less than a $250,000 gain if you spent 450, if you inherited the house at 450, you sell it at 700, that's a difference of $250,000 and you've put money in the house. So tell me what you've put into the house. She says, well, we had to replace the roof. That was $30,000. And then we did X and Y or whatever. She's telling me all these things. I said, so your gain is probably, I don't know, $150,000. I said, you have no worries about having to pay any tax. So she says, so you mean that when I sell this house, someone's going to hand me a check for $700,000 and I'm not going to owe any taxes on it? I said, well, yes, kind of. I said, you're still going to have to pay broker's fees and some other, you know, associated fees attached to it. And you don't know that you're going to get exactly $700,000 for it either. You might get more or less. But yeah, basically whatever you walk away from is tax-free. She says, yeah, but I still am going to have to pay that tax that Joe Biden says because I, because he said we're going to pay tax on anybody that has more than $450,000. I said, no, no, that's not it. What do you mean, Mark, that's not it? I said, your income right now, first of all, taxes, income taxes are based upon income that's shown in your tax return, not your assets. And this is what was confusing her. Her income right now is about $30,000 from Social Security. And she takes about $40,000 from her collective investment account. So she has $70,000 in income that she receives. Yeah, but she says, but Mark, I have a million dollar investment portfolio. And I'm going to have this $700,000 from the house. That's $1.7 million. That's more than $450,000. He said, no, 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 no. That's assets. That's what you have. You pay tax on the income you receive. And only some of that income you receive is even subject to tax. So she says, so wait a minute. I'm not going to be paying that high income tax rate at $440,000 or whatever, you know, Joe Biden said that number is going to be. I said, no, you're going to pay tax on whatever is taxable from your social security and the money that you take from your investment account to support your income. She says, well, that's next to nothing. I said, you're right, because that's because that forty thousand dollars that she's taking from her investment account, only about fifteen thousand of it is subject to tax. So she has thirty thousand dollars coming from Social Security, fifteen thousand dollars in taxable income coming from her investment account. And I said, you're basically in the, I don't know, three to five percent tax bracket. Wait, I don't get that. 
And so in my office, I put her income, not her assets, the income that she's expected to receive into our tax planning software. Now, we do not provide, we do not do taxes. I do not deliver tax advice. What I do, though, is I can showcase what a pro forma tax might look like. Of course, you want to confirm all of that with your accountant and with your tax preparer. Folks, I've been doing this 30 years. I kind of know what I'm doing, but I still can't be the authority on providing tax advice. I can provide tax guidance. How's that? So we put all of her data into my software. And actually, the software is free to all of you. If you go to my website, freedmanfinancial.com, and you click on the tab that says resources, you'll see what's something that's called a 1040 tax calculator. Put it in yourself. You can put in your own information, and you'll find the answer of what your real tax rate is. And she was floored. She said, why do I owe such little tax? I said, I said, hold on. I said, there's, there's something that's called tax brackets, which means what is the tax rate you pay on the last dollar of your taxable income? And there's something that's called the effective tax rate. So someone could have a $100,000 income and feel that they're in the 28% tax bracket, yet they don't owe $28,000 in taxes. Huh? Mark, if I'm making $100,000 and I'm in the 28% tax bracket, why don't I owe $28,000 in taxes? Because you don't. And I'm not, I'm not trying to be curt here, but you've got to fought This is the language that gets you hear on the radio, that you hear through social media, that you hear through the p- political pundits. Your tax rate is far, far less than that in many cases. But what you need to do is really take a look at it through a piece of tax planning software. Because one of the best things that a certified financial planner can do for you, can't do the taxes for you, we don't do provide tax advice, but we can give you a sense so that you can have a conversation with your accountant to, to help you understand where is the best place to pull money from your resources so that you pay the least amount of taxes. Yes, we still have a patriotic duty to pay taxes in this country, but the tax code was written so that you can follow the guidelines and figure out ways that you can pay the least amount in taxes. That's not beating the system. It's leveraging the system that somebody has put in front of you. That's your obligation. And if you don't know how to do that, leverage somebody. Leverage a professional. Use us. That's what we do at Friedman Financial. It's not just about the investment piece. But I do want to talk a little bit about investments. Because... There's a lot of misinformation out there, and people are starting to get speculative about investments. So why don't we take a quick break? When we get back, I'm going to talk about investments. We're going to talk about what's doing well, what's not doing so well, and where you should be invested. But before we head out, I want to remind you once again about our newsletter. It comes out each and every Friday at 1030 in the morning. It's called Planning Pointers. If you'd like to get a copy of this sent to your inbox, where we provide three very brief stories of what I call financial advice in a language you can understand, go to my website, freedmanfinancial.com. That's Friedman, to E's and a D, financial.com. Go to the bottom of any page, put in your name, your email address, and it's that simple. Hit send. And you will be part of the 7,500 other subscribers that are part of our newsletter. We'll take a quick break. When we're back, we got more financial advice in a language you can understand. You're listening to Dollars and Cents with Friedman Financial on North Shore 104.9. As you prepare for retirement, we know that your financial hopes and dreams are important to you. But how can you focus on the future when you're so busy juggling the day to day? You need a plan, a plan you can define, a plan you can track, and a plan you can modify as things change. At Friedman Financial, that's what we do. We know that planning for your retirement can be overwhelming, but with more than 50 years of experience, we know what you're going through. We're experienced, and we're fiduciaries. We listen, we collaborate, and we deliver a plan that helps you sleep at night. You don't have to do this alone anymore. Turn to us to ask why, and how, and what if. Now's the time to get serious about your retirement. Give us a call. We're Friedman Financial of Peabody. Financial advice in a language you can understand. 
visit FriedmanFinancial.com. That's Friedman, two E's and a D, Financial.com. Friedman Financial is a registered investment advisor. Securities offered through LPL Financial. Member FINRA, SIPC. The following message is brought to you by Friedman Financial of Peabody through 1049's Project Local Program. Hi, it's Daniela from North Shore Hospitality Group. Daniela's Cafe Danvers, Polana Steakhouse, and the new Daniela's Restaurante in Peabody. Reminding you to support your local restaurants. Stop by the cafe for pasta and pastries. Enjoy a cocktail on our heated veranda at Daniela's Restaurante. Or indulge in prime steaks and seafood at Polana Steakhouse. Dine in, take out, or purchase gift cards from all of our locations. Daniela's Cafe Danvers, Polana Steakhouse, and the new Daniela's Ristorante Peabody. Welcome back to Dollars and Cents with Friedman Financial on North Shore 1049. Is it the sun that I see trying to break through these clouds? Um, well, not yet, but maybe. I think it's I think it's trying to work through. I really do. It has just been a miserable July. It's a little wet out there. Um, if you got plans. Uh, today, I hope you um, enjoy time with friends and family, but if you've got nothing to do for brunch today, join me over at Gaetano's Restaurant in Stoneham from 11 to 1 a.m. They've got great breakfast and brunch food, and my son Noah and I will be performing live from 11 to 1, playing um, anything from, I don't know, Sinatra to Maroon 5 to Billy Joel to Elton John to Adele to, I don't know, everything. And, and you just name it. You just throw out a song. We'll try to play it for you. We'll have a good time. And uh, like I said, Gaetano's in Stoneham from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, please call in advance to make sure you get a reservation. We want to be sure you get a seat there because I don't know if they'll have the outdoor patio open today. It's a little wet out there. So, um, but, but certainly swing by. Anyway, my name is Mark Friedman. I'm president and CEO of Friedman Financial located in Peabody, Massachusetts, right across the street from the North Shore Mall and just above. Alto, oh, I said it almost, almost. Alto Forno has slipped out of my mouth. It is now Daniela's Ristorante. Uh, where they have some fabulous, fabulous food. Best part, I think, is how it starts off. The garlic bread. Their garlic bread is awesome. It's like focaccia bread. Well, no, it's not focaccia bread. What kind of bread do you call that? Um, I don't know. It's just really good bread. I'm, I'm not... I, Joe Pantadosi is on later on. Maybe he'll tell you what kind of bread they're having. And, of course, right after me is Scott Whitley, and he's got a great lineup of restaurants. And I'm curious as to what uh, the results were about the beach pizza conversation that he had last week. I happen to be up by Hampton Beach. I saw a very big line outside of um, Tripoli's as I was heading home last night. So um, I'm sure all the beach pizza places are doing well. Anyway, I promised you when we got back, I would talk to you a little bit about investments. And I always find it interesting. You think back a few months ago when everybody was calling, me, Mark, what do you think about crypto? What do you think about cryptocurrency? So what do you think about Tesla? What do you think about marijuana stocks, sir? Everybody, there was something that was hot right now. What do you think about AMC? What do you think about Kodak? What do you think about, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And my answer has always been and continues to be and has been this way since I started 10 years ago on the radio. I'm not interested. That's the true, honest answer. I do not recommend individual securities. Never have, never will. Because it is far too big of a gamble for anyone, you and I. Now, the the um, interest that has shown up in something called Robinhood. You've heard of this um, online thing. I mean, where you can buy, well, Fidelity, I think, has came up with the name of it. Slices of a fund. Where you can buy fractional shares, all that kind of stuff. I just saw my son, Jerry. He has a Robinhood account that he started about a year and a half ago. And I'm looking at his bank account. I said, Jerry, what are these $5 purchases? I see two $5 purchases going out every day. And they've been going out for like a month and a half. I said, what are you doing? He says, I'm dollar cost averaging, Dad. Dollar cost averaging into what? And he says, every day the market is open, I buy $5 of two different, two, two stocks. It's the same stock and he's buying it $5 every day. I guess you can do that in Robinhood. And he... <laughs> I'm like, whatever, Jerry. And he has no idea why he does it. He just, and but, but there's millions of people that are doing it. When you work with a financial advisor and it's time to get serious about your investments, speculation and not having a rationale or reason for why you're investing in something um, is not a great strategy. You need to know why you're making decisions and why they're for the short term, for the long term, whether it's for investing or speculating. At Friedman Financial, we have no interest in speculating. We have no interest in even being tactical. 
What tactical means is, oh my goodness, I heard the market dropped, or the market's going to go down, or I heard inflation's coming back, or interest rates are going up, and that could hurt the market. Should we get out? No. We reassess our portfolio. We reassess your risk tolerance. We reassess your long-term goals, and we say, okay, is there any tweaking that's necessary? But do we make dramatic changes to your portfolio? Absolutely not. That is what's the most dangerous approach. That is what gets people in trouble. I mean, think about this. Think about celebrities. Think about our sports stars. Remember Antoine Walker, who used to play for the Celtics? And he signs an $80 million contract for to play a certain number of years with the Celtics. And when it's all said and done, Antoine Walker has to file for bankruptcy? Because he didn't have a long-term plan. He had, he was tactical. He was speculative. He was all about the action and all about doting on a lot of people because he felt like he owed them. And he walked out of there, walked out of his career with nothing, nothing to show for it. Folks, we're not given the opportunities that an Antoine Walker or um, a Mark McGuire or anybody else might have had. We're given the opportunity to save money on, an, on incremental basis, the opportunity to work hard, to put money aside, to live with one foot in the present and one in the future. And if we don't do it right, there's opportunities to fix it a little bit, but the later we get in our life, the more difficult it is to take advantage of what might be in front of us. We wanna be smart. We wanna be strategic. We wanna take advice from people who are rational during emotional times, not from people who get freaked out based upon a news report or a study that they've read about or something that they heard at work or an internet feed or a TikTok video or an Instagram sign, whatever it is. No, you don't want that. Instead, we want to be rational. You know, a year ago, everybody was saying, Mark, why would I even bother to invest in large cap value investments when stocks like Google and Tesla and Apple and Netflix and all these companies are doing so well and they're so far outperforming everything else on the street. Well, guess what? There's a lot of stocks that did very, very well the first half of the year. But Tesla wasn't one of them. Google wasn't one of them. Amazon and Apple weren't one of them. They didn't do well at all. You know what did really well? Stocks that would fall into the category of large cap value. That was the area that nobody wanted to invest in last year. They're still very, very, very well-established companies. They pay a dividend. They're sturdy. They don't innovate that much, but you feel like they're being well-run, well-managed. And frankly, I'm not about to pick which ones are the good ones and which ones are the bad ones. I'm going to leave that in the hands of the portfolio managers. The people that run mutual funds, that run exchange-traded funds, Index investing, that's where I'm going to leave those decisions because my job as a financial planner is making sure that you don't do something dumb. My job is to provide rational advice during emotional times, to help you make smart decisions about your money, to make sure that you're communicating about financial decisions effectively and appropriately, and that you're not relying on piecemeal advice that steers you in the wrong direction, that makes have you to make decisions that may do well in the short term but could be disastrous down the road. I want you to be smart. I want you to be thoughtful. And I want you to think and ask yourself, is this financial advice in a language that I can understand? When someone explains something to me, do I get it? Can I tell the story of why I did what I did? What is it that was the smart moves that I made? Where did I get my best advice? And I think most people will tell you, especially when it comes down to an investment decision that they made, the best investments that people have ever made are the ones that they've decided to hold on to for a very long time because they had confidence in the investments that they made. I hope that this show like this, like Dollars and Cents, gives you confidence in making smarter financial decisions. And if now is the time for you to get serious about your financial needs, I hope you'll give our office a call, 978 531 8108. That's 978 531 8108. Give our office a call to schedule a free initial consultation or visit my website, freedmanfinancial.com. 
That's Friedman to ease in a D financial dot com. Go to the bottom of any page, put in your name and email address, and hey, you can get our newsletter. Comes out every Friday at ten thirty. But for now, I gotta get out of here, and make room for Scott Whitley and Wicked Bites Radio. Scott I'm passing it on to you. Have a great day. And um, I'm heading off to Gaetano's. We'll be there from 11 to 1 in Stoneham. Have a great day, everybody. You're listening to Dollars and Cents with Friedman Financial on North Shore 1049. Thanks for tuning into Dollars and Cents with Friedman Financial. During the show, specific investments may have been discussed. These discussions are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations. Please consult a certified financial planner, tax professional, or attorney to determine what is appropriate for you. Consider your investment objectives, risk, charges, and expenses of an investment company before investing. That's because investing involves risk, including a loss of principal. A prospectus contains this and other information about mutual funds, variable annuities, and variable annuity sub-accounts. Prospectuses should be read carefully before making an investment. Securities are offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA and SIPC. Investment and financial planning advice is offered through Mark's firm, Friedman Financial, which is a registered investment advisor and a separate entity from LPL. Thanks again for tuning in. See you next Sunday at 8 a.m.